Hello, it's Miss Beatty here and today we are following on from our work with percentages. Uh, we've already looked at finding a percentage of a shape, we've looked at converting fractions and decimals into percentages and converting percentages back into fractions and decimals, but today we are looking at finding a percentage of an amount. So we're learning to calculate a percentage of an amount, to use our division skills to find our percentages and to work with 10%, 25% and 50%. And the reason we're working with these percentages is because these are common ones that you will find in everyday life. So it's important to understand them and how to find those percentages of a number. And this video is going to show you how to do that step by step. So I hope it helps. Remember, you can pause the video or you can rewind it to look back at anything to help with your understanding, okay? So we just need to remember that percentages are always out of 100. The number 100 is really important when trying to work with percentages because we know that percentages, well, they're always out of 100%. So looking at 10%, if you are asked to find 10% of a number, you just need to divide by 10, okay? You just need to divide by 10. And we've looked at tenths, so we know that to divide by 10, you just need to move the decimal point to the left by one space, but I will show you that in a little second. 10% as a decimal looks like this, 0 0.1. You could say 0 0.10, okay, you could put a zero here, but you don't need to because that's just a placeholder, so 0 0.1 is fine. As a fraction, 10% is 10 over 100. 10 out of 100, because remember, percentages are always out of 100%. And as a percentage, it's written like this, 10%. So when you're asked to find 10% of a number, you're just dividing by 10. So just remember that, dividing by 10. 10% of 70. So how many 10s go into 70? Well, what you can do is you can use your 10 times table to help you, or you can simply knock off the zero to give you seven, okay? Or if you wanted, you could move the decimal point back one space to the left and put it here. So it would become 7.0, okay? But 7.0 is the same as seven pounds or seven, but we've got the pound sign, so it's seven pounds. You just remember if you've got a zero in your number, you can just take one zero off and that will give you the answer. You could use your 10 times table and ask yourself how many tens go into 70, which is seven or you could move the decimal point to the left by one space and you would get seven. So those are different ways you can get the answer. But 10% of 70 pounds is seven pounds. And we've put the pound sign in because that's what's in the question. What about this one? 10% of 650 kilometers. So my answer is going to be in kilometers. Well, the number's got a zero, so I can just take the zero off. And I know that it's going to be 65 kilometers. Again, I could ask myself how many times 10 goes into 650, or I could move my decimal point one space to the left, put it here, and I would get 65.0, which is the same as 65 kilometers. What happens if I'm asked 10% of 245 centimeters? Well, my answer is going to be in centimeters. There's no zeros, so I'm going to have to move my decimal point to the left by one space. So here, it goes in here. So 10% of 245 is 224.5 centimetres because I've divided it by 10 by moving my decimal point to the left by one space. What about this one here? 10% of £3.50. Well, we've already got a decimal point and we can't just take the zero off because that wouldn't make sense. So what I need to do is I need to move my decimal point back by one space so it goes here, okay, and I would put my zero in. So it would become 0 0.35, okay. Now I could write it like this with the pound sign, 0 0.35, which is the same as saying 35 pence. So 10% of three pounds 50, is 35 pence. I could write it as 0 0.35 or I don't want to, I could just write it like 35 
in. So that's how you work out a sum that's already got, or a number that's already got the decimal point in it. You just move it to the left by one space. So I hope that makes sense. If you're asked to find 25% of a number, you just need to divide by four, okay? 25% as a decimal is 0 0.25. As a fraction, it's 25 out of 100, and it is equal to 25%. Now, the reason 25% is equal to one quarter Okay, so we would be dividing by our four is because 25 goes into 100 four times. If I did 25, add 25, add 25, add 25, I've got one, two, three, four 25s to equal 100. So that is why you divide by four, and that is why 25% is equal to a quarter. Okay, so if you're asked to find 25% of a number like this or this here, you're dividing by four. So you're using your four times table to help you. 25% of eight, well, is the exact same as saying what is eight divided by four? Okay, how many fours go into eight? The answer is two. And I'd have to write two centimetres because that is what unit we are working with because it says that in the question, two centimetres. What about 25% of 16 pounds? Well, again, we're just doing 16 divided by four. And I'm asking myself, how many fours go into 16 pounds? If I use my four times table, four, eight, 12, 16, I know that four times six, four times four is 16. So my answer is going to be four pounds. What about 25% of 84? So now we're working with slightly larger numbers and it doesn't have any units. So my answer is just going to be a whole number. 84 divided by four. I can either use the bus stop method of division to help us. So setting it out like this, okay? Or I can simply just use my mental maths. How many fours go into eight? Well, the answer would be two, okay? How many fours go into four? The answer would be one. And if I did that like a bus stop division, how many fours go into eight? Two. How many fours go into four? One. The answer to 25% of 84 is 21. Okay. For numbers that are three digits or larger than that, okay, that's when I would tend to use the bus stop method of division to help us, okay? So 25% of 456 meters. So because 25% is worth four, we would put four as the number that we're going to divide 456 by. So I would do it like this. And it's okay to do it like this. If you can do it in your head, that's absolutely fine. And obviously you can do it on a calculator, but it's good to learn the skill using your mental mass or using your brain. How many fours go into four? Well, I know my answer is going to be one. So I put one on top. How many fours go into five? Well, four doesn't go into five, but I know it goes into four because four is less than five. It goes into four once. And the remainder is one because four to get to five is one space. So I put my remainder and carry over here to make 16. How many fours go into 16? The answer would be four because four times four is 16. So I know that 25% of 456 meters is 114 meters. So that is how you work out 25% of a number. So I hope that makes sense. You might also be asked to find 50% of a number. Now 50% is a very common percentage that you will see in everyday life. And you just need to remember that it's dividing by two because 50% is the same as a half. 50% as a decimal is 0 0.50, 0, 0 0.5, okay? As a fraction, it is five over 100. Sorry, 50 over 100. And as a percentage is 50%. And 50% is equal to a half because a half of 100 is 50. And we know that 50 add 50 is equal to 100. So when you're asked to find 50% of anything, you are just finding a half of it. You're dividing by two. So let's look at some examples. 50% of 10. 
Okay, so you're basically being asked, what is a half of 10? What is 10 divided by two? And we're going to be, our answer is going to be in centimeters because that is the unit we are working with. So what is, how many twos go into 10? The answer would be five centimeters because a half of 10 is five. Okay, what about this one here? 50% of 44. Again, it's just 44 divided by two. OK, you could set that out like a bus stop division or you could just use your mental math. How many twos go into four? The answer is two. How many twos go into four? Two. OK, so 50 percent of 44 pounds is 22 pounds. OK, 50 percent of 148 grams. So our answer is going to be in grams. We're dividing 148 by Two. You can set it out like a bus stop division to help you if that is going to make more sense or it will help you get the answer a little bit quicker. Two goes on the outside because that's our 50%. It's two. How many twos go into one? Well, I know that two doesn't go into one, so I would put zero on the top. I've got a remainder of one, okay, because zero to get to one is one space. That becomes 14. How many twos go into 14? If I do my two times table to get 14, I know the answer is seven. And how many twos go into eight? Two, four, six, eight, four. Two times four is eight. So I know that 50% of 140 grams is 74 grams, okay? 50% of 670 meters, okay? Again, I would just do 670 as a bus stop method of division to help me. I put two on the outside, 670 divided by two. How many twos go into six? Three, because two times three is six. How many twos go into seven? Well, two doesn't go into seven, but it does go into six. Okay, it goes into six three times with a remainder of one, because six to get to seven is one space. How many twos go into our 10? The answer would be five, because two times five is 10. Okay, so 50% of 670 meters is 335 meters. So I hope that makes sense. So 10%, you're dividing by 10, 25% you are dividing by four and 50% you are dividing by two, okay? You will also be asked to find uh, quite, well, percentages within a problem solving question. So I'm gonna just show you how you work these out. It's very similar to what we've just done, apart from it is a question that you need to read carefully before you show your answer or your working. Mary saved up £450. She spent 50% of this money on a holiday to Spain. How much money did Mary spend on the holiday? So she's got £450 in total and she spent 50% of that. She spent half of that on her holiday to Spain. So we want to work out how much of this money did she spend on going to Spain? So a half of £450. So I can show my working by setting it out like a bus stop method of division. And I put two on the outside because remember a half is 50%. How many twos go into four? Well, the answer is two. How many twos go into five? Well, we know two doesn't go into five, but it does go into four two times. But there's going to be a remainder of one because four to get to five is one space. And I need to carry that remainder over here to make 10. How many twos go into 10? The answer would be five. So how much money did Mary spend on the holiday to Spain? Mary spent 225 pounds, okay, on her holiday to Spain because she spent 50% of that money, which is half, 225 pounds. So that's how you show you're working for a question like that. Mary saved up £450, but this time she spent 25% of this money on clothes for her holiday. How much money did she spend on the clothes? 
you just show the exact same working apart from you're working with 25%, which we know is equal to a quarter. So we are dividing by four. So you could set that out like a bus stop method of division. You could put your 450 pounds because that's what Mary started with. That's what she saved up, 450 pounds. And she spent 25%, a quarter. So we're dividing by four on clothes. So how many fours go into four? The answer would be one. How many fours go into five? Well, four doesn't go into five, but we know it goes into four once. So we put one up here with a remainder of one because four to get to five is one. So we put the one here, okay? And that is equal to 10. Does four go into 10? No, it doesn't. I know that it goes into eight though, okay? Four goes into eight twice with a remainder of two because eight to get to 10 is two. So if I was to write that in pounds, I know that Mary spent 112 pounds 20 on clothes. I would just put the zero in because that is our placeholder. So Mary spent 112 pounds 20 pence on clothes for her holiday out of her 450 pounds budget. So that's 25% of 450. The last example I want to look at is 10%. So Mary, she's got her 450 pounds saved up. She spent 10% of this, this money, on food to take to Spain. How much money did she spend on food? So again, it's just 450 pounds divided by 10. And I told you earlier that when you divide anything by 10 that's got a zero on it, you just knock the zero off. So the answer would be 45 pounds that she spent on food for her holiday. Okay, 45 pounds. Again, if you were to move that decimal point back one space, okay, it would become, oops, that out just so we can see it a little bit better. If we were to move that decimal point, okay, back from 450, like this, would become 45.0, which is the same as 45 pounds. Okay, so that is how you divide anything by 10 or how you find 10% of a number. So we know that Mary spent 45 pounds on food to take to Spain. Those are some examples that are similar to the ones that are going to come up in your activity sheet. I hope this video has helped, uh, helped you understand percentages and how to find a percentage of an amount. Again, pause it if you would like to. Remember to challenge yourself and ask for help if you need it. Okay.